Aha. Hop. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Michel Combe. You will maybe recognize that I am not American, but I am French, and I am the president and CEO of Sprint. I joined the CTIA board of directors this year, which is really perfect uh, timing since it's the biggest year ever for the wireless industry with the launch of 5G. So I am, of course, extremely excited. The country that leads in 5G will be a global hub for innovation and investment. Just think of the massive wave of growth that's coming in new technologies and service across all the industries. But before we talk about which country is ready to lead and what the US needs to be a global leader in 5G moving forward, let's take a minute to acknowledge the tremendous progress which we made as an industry and which has already been captured by some of my colleagues. As you can see on these slides, it takes all of us to make an impact, including, of course, CTIA, the FCC, each of the carriers, device manufacturers, and our vendor partners. I also want to thank Larry and his colleagues at the White House for their leadership and for their efforts to remove obstacles to deployment and make more spectrum available for 5G. The FCC in particular has contributed to US 5G readiness by implementing 5G infrastructure reform and spectrum auctions. And we are certainly grateful for US policymakers at the federal level, but also at the state levels, which have worked to ease buyers to small cell deployments. I also would like to thank my predecessor, Sprint's executive chairman, Marcelo Claure, and former chairman of CTIA for recognizing the enormous opportunity with 5G and creating, I guess, a sense of urgency that is driving us forward as an industry. There are the critical steps that helps us pave the way for the US to lead in 5G. So thank you for a job well done. I'm so proud to be playing now for Team US. It seems like not a single day goes, goes by without seeing a headline with a 5G announcement. We are certainly extremely or excelling at marketing 5G, conducting early trials, and even commercial launches, and in getting the media to hype it up. But despite all those great strides, there is still a lot to be, do, to be done to ensure that the US will continue to lead the race to 5G. And we have to accelerate our efforts, because China is not remaining standstill. In fact, they have more encumbered spectrum, more wireless infrastructure, and more capital than any other country, which will help them moving forward. I had a big wake-up call with some of my colleagues in Barcelona a few months ago at Mobile World Congress. The event 5G themes dominated keynotes, presentations, announcements, as you can expect and as you can imagine. But there is no doubt in my mind that even if they were a little bit slow to start, that there is a massive 5G wave which is arriving in China, and we will have a major issue if we don't act quickly in order to maintain and preserve our leadership. The US simply cannot afford to be complacent, especially when multiple independent reports show that without aggressive action, we will not overcome China progress. So just to give you a few examples, Chinese governments award spectrum to carriers as needed across low, mid, and high bands. But in the US, no carrier today has sufficient access to all three layers of spectrum, which are needed for a true national wide mobile 5G network. The US also lacks infrastructure and site density. Think about it. Just to give a quick figures, there are nearly 2 million cell sites in China today. In comparison, 
all of the wireless network operators and tower companies in the US have only about 200,000 cell sites combined. The rate that China is densifying its network is mind-blowing. They have added 350,000 cell sites on air in the past three years versus less than 30,000 built in the US during the same period. Aided by these tailwinds, China Mobile is embarking on its ambition to become the global 5G leader and is currently testing 5G in 17 cities involving 16 device manufacturers, six chipset vendors, 20 research labs, and more than 400 industry partners. Finally, the US is behind in terms of 5G capital investments due to the issues that I've just highlighted. Since 15, China has outspent the US by an estimated of eight to 10 billion per year on its wireless networks. And in the next five years, China is projected, that's just a projection that we can, of course, derail to outspend US operators by 50%. In a December 18 planning meeting, China's top council even issued a mandate to accelerate the pace of the 5G deployment. Meanwhile, a recent report from HSBC predicts no major increase in capital expenditures from the US mobile broadband operators in the next five years. If we don't act, and if we don't act quickly altogether, this is what we are facing. Companies like Sprint don't have enough financial resources to invest fully in 5G. Good spectrum, but not all the spectrum and not all the financial resources. And all the US carriers lack the right spectrum assets to fully invest in 5G. Verizon and AT&T lack sufficient mid-band spectrum to build out true national 5G. The news I just shared, which let's say I just wanted to, to highlight, expose the risk we face by not leading in 5G. I guess that it was reminded earlier to paint a clearer picture of what's at stake consider, consider the 4G era. The US, and I know that from fact, was in Europe at that stage, was three years ahead of China and all the other countries in launching 4G. No one realized that it at that time, but it really gave US businesses the opportunity to start an app revolution. And now most of us can't imagine a world without apps like Uber, Facebook, and Instagram. Because of the high quality of American 4G networks, and the hundreds of billions we invested, we have helped create the world's most valuable companies. In 16 alone, 4G contributed $100 billion to the American economy. And it's fair to say that leadership in 4G to date has contributed more than a trillion dollars to the American economy. That's why America cannot afford to lose this leadership in the race to 5G, which is going to dwarf 4G and span all the industries. We do not want to see the next Uber being built elsewhere than in the US, don't we? So what do we need, does the US need to do to win the race to 5G? I guess that there are mainly three components uh, which are important if you agree with me that you need the spectrum, you need the financial resources, and you need the infrastructure in order to be able to make it happen. And so we need to give a chance to all the players within the industry in order to make it happen. Of course, and you can imagine that I was going to play for it. For starters, that's not a surprise, I guess. For starters, we need regulatory approval of Sprint's merger with T-Mobile. The new T-Mobile, and I guess that we have been very vocal on this one, and that's really all the story around this merge, can create a US wireless company with the spectrum assets, with the scale, and with the financial resources to really accelerate US 5G deployment into a leading position worldwide. Together, we plan to invest in the next three years $40 billion to build the best national-wide 5G network, 
one that neither company could build on its own due to the limitations that we have either in terms of financials or in terms of spectrum. Combining our 2.5 spectrum with T-Mobile's low band and high band spectrum would allow us to turbocharge 5G in the next few years. And it would also, which is really great, it would also generate greater competition in the industry and provide huge benefits for the consumer, which is all this story is about. You will hear more about the benefits of the merge from uh, Neville Zray from T-Mobile later in the program. But next, of course, that's not sufficient. That gives or that allow new Timo to be one of the players in the race, but we need several players, as it is the case in China with the three major carriers. So the second piece is that all the carriers need more access to the spectrum. We have started, I guess that some auctions have already been initiated, but there's still a lot to be done in terms of mid-band spectrum. The upcoming auction of millimeter wave will not solve the current spectrum issues, issue that US carriers are facing because you cannot build a 5G national wide network just with millimeter wave spectrum. And we all know that freeing up the spectrum of, uh, over the next five years will create 1.8 million jobs and grow American economy by nearly 400 billion, according to a recent study of the analysis group. Access to new spectrum will stimulate 5G investment by all the players, Verizon, AT&T, and of course, new Timo, to create a more robust and competitive 5G market as what we want is enough players with enough financial resources in order to be able to really deploy those networks and to fight against each other in the benefit of the customer, which is what is happening in China, for example, with free main carriers having access to all those spectrum with the right towers and with the right spectrum in order to fight. The third and last piece is we need to accelerate still the work on the way to proliferate small cell deployments. I told you 2 million sites versus 200,000. The only way to do that is to accelerate rollout of towers. And I would like to thank personally Chairman Pai, who will be there later, for his leadership in helping us removing barriers to US cell site deployments. But we need and we will continue to build on this momentum. 5G is going to enable life-changing use cases, many that we can't even imagine yet. Before we can bring innovations to life in a 5G world, we must ensure that we have a solid strategy in, pla in place where the entire industry, and as it was, let's say, requested earlier on, is firing on its all uh, cylinders, taking all the risks that you expect from private operators in order to put money at risk, in order to make sure that we build the best infrastructure. When this happens, we will force China to follow our lead. And by that time, my concern is that maybe Europe will have disappeared. But well, that's not the purpose of the speech today. So thanks a lot for listening to me 